What's up guys, welcome to the finale of Let's Play Sengoku Basara 2 on the HD collection. So, Hideyoshi is almost finished with his conquest, and who's the last person that stands in his way? But, Nobunaga. Okay, that's a little odd. I really, really love the imagery there with the, uh, the eclipsed sun, though, that's really cool. So this stage is actually fantastic, I've been really looking forward to this. I'm pretty sure this is the only time in the game you can go to this stage is playing as Hideyoshi. We fought Nobunaga earlier in the game when we were uh, playing as uh, Keiji, actually, where we interrupted his fight between um, himself and Akashi Mitsuhide, which is very appropriate for that character. Just to be like, hey guys, love and peace, let's all get along, and not try to kill each other like we should. Although, why Hideyoshi is going after Nobunaga, I have no idea, considering they were allies, and uh, at least in history, and... Uh, Hideyoshi is basically the one that succeeds the conquest in Japan after Nobunaga is killed. <clears throat> but Nobunaga is pretty much the villain of the series. He's essentially the villain of most Japanese, like most Sengoku era inspired fiction in general. Yeah, Nobunaga is almost like the, the most overused villain character as far as we talk about historical figures being turned into like cliche villains that is like what Nobunaga exists for pretty much it's really it's kind of a shame but his design at least remains consistent throughout most of uh, most of these fictional works his design and boss are just being that much more over the top so you know going into this series that you're going to get a Nobunaga and the Nobunaga you're going to get is going to be fan fucking tastic but anyway um, so, for instance, he's also in the Onimusha series, and he's an over-the-top villain there. He's in, obviously, Samurai Warriors. He's in... Um, he's even in Pokemon Conquest. <laughs> he's, he's a villain in a damn Pokemon game. Uh, yeah, so... And it's really, it's really interesting. I, I really wonder um, how much significance Nobunaga has as a historical figure in Japan, because he's in so much fictional works and he's portrayed as a villain, but really his impact on the Sengoku era was relatively minor when you consider um, how small his clan was before he uh, took over the capital, and how quickly he was killed after that. But anyway, let's get back to the gameplay. So uh, there's going to be some ninjas here that are attacking us, and Hideyoshi's just going to throw them across the room. So this this is actually sort of a, uh, a locked arena that we're in, where we have to clear the multiple waves of enemies before we can proceed. Uh, it's, it's a bit repetitive, but I do like it because this guy's blocking us pretty good. What the heck is his problem? You trying to catch these hands? <laughs> you can't catch these hands. Anyway. So, uh, the fact that they trap us in here like this is, is an interesting gameplay mechanic because you have to fight all the enemies in order to move on. Uh, it just makes this stage a lot more interesting. There's a very similar concept to this in Boss Rora 4 with... Uh, Takata Shingen having like an ascending elevator arena almost that you get to fight different types of enemies and there's even some boss rounds and things like that so this is like an early prototype to that almost and of course they send in the cavalry units which are horrible as we all know I don't I do not like the cavalry units they're very difficult to dodge I've definitely gotten better at it than I was when I first played boss Rora one that was a nightmare trying to dodge these things so as you can see, I, I've selected my setup for the finale here. I have the, uh, the tornado spinning attack where we pick up a guy and throw him. And then I'm not sure what I selected for the other one. Oh, the um, the Fury of Fists one. So those that's my setup going into this. So those are my two favorite moves. I'm, I love that, uh, that visual there of the castle in the distance like that. Very, very different stage than the one we had with... Uh, when we, we normally fight Nobunaga, but this one is a lot more imposing. It's a lot more similar to what we have in the anime, where the anime, he basically has, you know, a large castle that they have to essentially bum-rush in the in the first season of the anime. Yeah, Nobunaga and Hideyoshi are never on screen together in any of the boss or animated works, ever, because Nobunaga's already dead in the continuity of boss or 2, the anime, as well as uh, boss or 3, the anime, uh, Judge End which are two separate continuities. Keep that in mind. And then by the time that... Uh, uh, spoilers. You may want to mute for this, but by the time that Nobunaga is resurrected in uh, Boss Rora Last Party, the movie, uh, Hideyoshi's already dead, so... 
they are never on screen together like this. But that's okay. We get that moment at least for this game. So one thing I really like about oh, I was able to look at how strong Hideyoshi is. Just block that stick of mighty beating like a champ. The guy comes rolling right towards him and he just catches it in his hand. Throw the boulder! I dare you! Yeah, I really wanted to have the most optimized gameplay possible for this map, so I'm not taking a lot of hits. I'm dodging a lot of these special units, uh, using those secondary moves on the bridge like that, and being able to take out all those guys in that in the tornado attack was pretty awesome. Managed to dodge those uh, the shots from those guys and their uh, arquebuses there. They were uh, glowing purple for some reason, which may have something to do with Nobunaga and his um, evil black magic. Uh, but who knows? <clears throat> it's really never explained. Uh, fortunately, there's no like poison effects or anything like that in this game like there are in some other Musou games. Or hell, even in Fate Excella, the poison effect we have there. There's nothing like that here. Um, obviously, Nobunaga is darkness elemental. I think uh, Hideyoshi is actually light elemental, which is interesting. Um, not that you really notice any type of light uh, effects. We notice it a little bit with Azai Nagamasa in the next game. Which we'll be getting to very soon. Another one of those fixed impl emplacements we can beat up in order to get coins, so I'm going to take advantage of that for a second. So, we've uh, managed to avoid fighting Hideyoshi's henchmen so far, and I'm not sorry, um, Nobunaga's henchmen so far in this game. But it looks like our uh, time with that's finally come to an end, so we'll beat them down one more time and then hopefully we'll never see them again. Right? No, we still have more. More shenanigans with Nobunaga and his henchmen in, in Basra 2 Heroes. But I promise, in Basra 3, there's no way we'll be running into Nobunaga in that game, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's all uphill from here, guys. I definitely am having a blast with this game. I'm very glad that I was able to make this a good quality Let's Play, even though the fan base has been completely inactive. Uh, I've barely gotten so much as a couple of views from these videos. Um, no real engagement to speak of whatsoever, which is really a shame. Um, but really, I don't feel like that's any fault of my own, because I did reset, reach out to the community to try to network this Let's Play. Um, there's just not that many people out there actively watching, and it really is a shame. And I hope I can connect and reach out to enough of you that like this franchise in order to make the future Let's Plays in this series more successful. So, and enough with the introspective rambling, let's go ahead and fight Mori Ranmaru, who is still a small child. So we're going to beat the crap out of him, and uh, he's not going to take that very well. So, Mori Ranmaru is pretty weak anyway, and then we're, we're just so immensely strong as Hideyoshi, he's just not going to stand up to this. So, yeah, Bora Boy Ranmaru doesn't get a lot of screen time in this game. He, he, we fought him quite a bit in the first game because we did uh, Nobunaga stage so many damn times in the first game. Oh, uh, that has to hurt. I kind of feel bad for him. Not really. So if you look at the map there, we're inside the castle now. We're almost to where Nobunaga is. We've got to head up these stairs. And uh, we'll, there'll probably be some obvious trap at the top from the enemies up there. I wish we could see ahead, but Hideyoshi's so huge we can't even see it. Um, so we do have to fight Lady Nohime at the top there, which is probably going to be a little bit more challenging, but still not as challenging as it was in the first game. Oh, we got a triple. Nice. We'll probably get a Basara rating. There we go. All right. The uh, boss rate rating is where you have more than 400 uh, hits in a combo. So it goes, uh, it goes like cool, double, triple, and then boss And I don't know what happens after that if anything does. Those those ridiculous combo chains are a little bit more common in the later games in the series. This was really the first game where you get to see big, you know, multi-hundred hit combos and things like that in. Uh, Often, they weren't really that like, common at all in the first game, but they will be even more common as we go forward. The enemy density will just increase and increase the further we get in this series. Plus, taking over checkpoints in, in Basra 3, you're definitely going to see some shenanigans when we get to that. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and use our Basra attack against Lady Nohime. Her gauge is actually filling up quite nicely there. I'm not going to use my other gauge until we're actually fighting Nobunaga, because that's really where it's going to count. Alright, yeah, she went down pretty quick. 
no challenge whatsoever. She does have uh, she does have an attack that she uses in the anime where she launches almost like a, a sub subterrain uh, torpedo where uh, it goes it burrows underground and comes up and blows up under your feet. She used that against uh, Honda Tadakatsu in the anime. All right, Nobunaga, let's end this. So again, this this weird confrontation between two titans is finally going to be decided, and we all know which one is stronger. But you know, Nobunaga is nothing to uh, laugh at either. I mean, he definitely is pretty strong. I didn't particularly. His move set is almost exactly the same as it was in the first game. I don't know how. I'm sure he plays a lot more smoothly uh, now, just because of the Bossra Two, the Bossra Two gameplay engine being a lot better. So we are going to have to be careful, but um, we already almost got him. Look at how much health damage we've done already. He does have a couple of new moves. For instance, uh, that move is really nice where he does like a little spiral attack and then uh, does an uppercut, which can launch us into the air. That's a very effective move. And then he had the one where he was shooting all the dark energy from his cape like that, which is pretty nice. All right. End of the line. ま、地獄に帰るのいい。これでこの国は秀吉君のものだ。だが、これは始まりに過ぎぬ。聞け。この国の強さを証明するため、世界を目指せ。世界を越え受けよう。All right, let's watch the credits roll. So I, I honestly remember, maybe I'm remembering this wrong, that Nobunaga would like resurrect after you knock him down and he would come back with another full health bar or something like that. Like he would do like a form change, but I must be thinking of a different game. Anyway, so like I said, I had a blast making this Let's Play. I really do love this series and I hope that I can continue to give it justice more and more as we go throughout the series. Um, I'm not going to allow the low amount of uh, engagement with the first Let's Play and with this one discourage me. I'm highly looking forward to Boss for Two Heroes. So, um, Boss for Two Heroes is the expansion to this game, which is also included on the HD collection. And uh, it uses the same exact gameplay engine, but it has three unique character stories that are new characters that are not that are seen in this game but not playable. So we get to play as Kojiro, Oichi, and Azai Nagamasa. So th that will be a lot of fun. Uh, those are some of my favorite characters in the series. Although I don't, I don't care for Nagamasa that much, but he will be fun to play as. And like I said, if you guys really want to see it, I will add a fourth character in um, Kotaro Fuma, who is not playable in a main hero story, but I can do like his his side story or his conquest mode just to be able to get uh, gameplay for him, because there probably will not be another opportunity where I'll play as Kotaro Fuma any other point in the series. I really like the song that plays at the end here. I have the actual soundtrack CD that's all the Basura game themes, and it has this and all the other opening themes and all of that. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, I really do want to get some more feedback and reach out to some more Basura fans. And if you guys are out there and you love this series, I'd love to talk to you guys. Just, you know, reach out to me and, you know, let's talk about. Whatever. Talk about your favorite character. Talk about the anime. Talk about the latest game. You know, whatever. I'm definitely uh, curious to strike up a conversation. Um, I would highly recommend if anyone is watching this that has never played the games before or hasn't played specifically Boss Horror 2, absolutely, absolutely buy the HD collection. It is so worth it. I mean, it's not terribly expensive. It is an import game, so obviously it's going to have a little bit, it's going to retain its value a lot better than an American game would. 
but absolutely pick up the HD collection. It is, it's probably, you know, maybe, it's hours and hours and hours of value across the three games for, um, and it looks fantastic. The actual HD upscaling is very good, especially in-game. And, um, you know, all the, none of the, none of the menus or cutscenes or anything has not been optimized fully to full frame HD and things like that. It really does look fantastic. So, um, and you really get to see the origins of the series as they gradually got better. Uh, again, the only real English Bossor game we have is the botched version of Bossor 1 through Devil Kings, and then Bossor 3. Um, so one thing is you will be able to understand what's going on in Bossor 3 with the items and all that that you won't be able to in this game, but I still highly recommend it. Um, and if you don't want to sit there and grind to unlock everything, the HD collection just has a built-in unlock everything button where you can just all of a sudden have every character max out their max level, which I, I did after test play. It's why all the characters are max level in, um, in Basura 2. So I wanted to be able to do that so I could show off everything, but I obviously wouldn't recommend it for your first time through because that gradual progression is, is kind of nice to be able to unlock things. So all the test playing is done for Basura 2 Heroes. Um, all the footage has actually already been recorded, so I'll give it a little while and I'll, I'll take a little break and I'll start up again with Basura 2 Heroes very soon. And I'll be playing as my favorite character of all through uh, Kojiro Katakura, so that'll be a lot of uh, a lot of excitement there. I'm very much looking forward to that. So until next time, this has been Let's Play Sengoku Basura 2 in the HD collection. <laughs>